What TV show springs to mind? I'm pretty sure it's... And there's more than just swords and dragons you're thinking of. It's all those characters and excitement you're feeling, all from just a few seconds of sound. And it's all those diverse characters and drama and excitement that mean over a million users have voted, giving the show a 9.5 rating. IMDB has more than just ratings. We can find other similar shows, information about the cast, trivia and quotes, and user reviews. As well as a feature that lets you search their entire database. So we're going to search for TV series which have at least 100,000 votes, display 250 results per page, and sort them by their rating. We can see Game of Thrones sitting proudly at number one, with lots of other familiar shows in the top five, all the way down to Glee. IMDB also kindly release subsets of their data, which are free to download and are updated daily. As you'd expect, this includes titles, genres, and of course, the ratings. All of this data will be downloaded and used to create an R Shiny app to explore it. There are many Shiny apps about many different topics, but they all allow for easy visual exploration of a dataset. All of this data is loaded into R, where I've built a Shiny app, which makes it easier to explore. It was a lot of work, trial and error, and googling, but a lot of fun to create a web app to explore the IMDB data. And it is now ready for you to play with, and I'll link it in the description. Here, we can see the rating for each episode of a show. We can see Game of Thrones has a dip in the middle of each season, before finishing on a high with those memorable episodes. The same is true for Breaking Bad, and we see it get better towards the end before finishing on a triumphant 9.9. .9. House of Cards ratings jump off a cliff after its lead actor was... well, you know. And we can also see that The Simpsons has been on TV for a little bit too long now. The next plot allows us to compare shows and see how their ratings change season by season. If we compare Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad, we see they both hover around the 9, but Game of Thrones seems to be consistently rated a little bit higher. Let's chuck a load more of the top rated shows on the plot. There appears to be a trend where the longer a show is on the air, the lower it starts to be rated. We can also change the x-axis to be the year the season was first shown. Remembering that these are the top rated shows, there appear to be a large chunk of them on the right hand side, starting on or after 2005. Which may help the argument that we are currently experiencing the golden age of television. Numerous high quality TV shows that everyone seems to be talking about, helped by advances in technologies of media distribution, such as as discussed in this TED Talk with the Netflix CEO. So, and, and I mean, this coming year, the level of investment you're planning to make in new content is not 100 million, it's, it's what? Uh, it's about $8 billion around the world. Um, and, uh, and it's not enough. Uh, with such a huge level of investment, it's no wonder we see a dramatic spike in the number of unique TV shows produced each year. And it's not just Netflix. Amazon, Apple, BBC and ITV, Disney and Hulu are all investing more and more in online streaming and original content to get their share of the pie. Why are they all so confident in investing these huge sums? Here's the Netflix CEO again. Uh, with the DVD, next episode, next episode. And so that was the trigger to make us think, wow, you know, with episodic content, especially serialized, it's so powerful to have all the episodes at once. And we've all been there after a late night binge session, absorbed and bleary eyed. But what human need is satisfied there? This is explored by the Media Insider. At times, we all get a bit lonely. Luckily, we have the media. Consider all those programs you've watched over the years where you feel like you actually know the characters, and worse yet, by the end of the series, you're not sure how you'll live without them. This is all evidence of the powerful bonds we're able to make with figures in the media. These bonds are so powerful that videos of people reacting to their favourite characters' deaths 
are more and more popular. Now, John Truby explains how we bond with characters in the media and why we care this much. What we care about is to see a character overcome a deep weakness. Now, the audience thinks that the story is all about the hero achieving his goal. But that is not what the audience is most interested in. Not does the hero accomplish the goal, but does the hero overcome the great weakness. An example of this is Breaking Bad which is explained by lessons from the screenplay. What is missing in Walt's life? Act 1 shows how powerless Walt is. He's passive, diplomatic, and despite being a brilliant chemist, is living a life where he's constantly demeaned. You got a brain the size of Wisconsin, but we're not gonna hold that against you. <laughs> by showing us a day in the life of Walter White, we see that he's someone who longs for control and purpose, but lacks both. A reason why this show was so successful could be because, as suggested earlier, we see Walt overcome his great weakness. Say my name. Eisenberg. You're goddamn right. We've seen a surge in the number of TV shows and heard about the huge levels of investment It's about $8 billion around the world and gained an understanding of how writers make us care so much about our favourite characters. To see a character overcome a deep weakness. Thanks for watching. I hope you have fun exploring your favourite TV shows on the web app and I'll see you next time.